video was originally recorded October 2018 at the annual Dr. Nita program held at Menla Retreat and Dewa Spa in Venetia, New York. To learn about annual Tibetan medicine programs, please visit TibetHouse.us and Menla.org. Did it make sense? Everything was clear? Okay. Probably one of the most uh, well articulated empowerments yeah. in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the on planet Earth. Yeah. With some humor. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew I was doing that on the view? Right, exactly, right? <laughs> I kind of, I was like so amazed that we got all of this. Did somebody say that? I just, it's like that we got empowerment for all, is that right? Yes, yes. That was just, so one question I do have about that is, um, we were talking about having more empowerment, but then um, I thought that Dr. Nina also said something about in the context of that, Yes, that, that happens when the chakras open. Those are each connected with the six yogas and the two mudras. Is there a is there a systematic connection like like that could be charted like those yogas for that yes. particular empowerment? Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. I have some too. Thank you. Bring the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 three minutes of breathing. Three minutes. Three Ten minutes. I see. Hopefully, people will be breathing for two more years. That's helpful. Okay. Let's just review this breathing so we make sure everybody knows it before we go into the. So coming to the seven point posture of our chin. And doing the empty body meditation. Visualizing yourself as a hollow shell of light. And three empty luminous channels. And blue one in the center. The red solar one on the right side. And the white lunar on the left. Do mindful purification like we've been doing every morning. So inhale through both nostrils. Exhale. And blocking the left nostril first. Inhale through the right side. You're drawing pure breath, pure light into the right channel. Hold the breath. Block the right nostril. Exhale left. Inhale left side. Cleaning up the left channel, hold the breath, block the left nostril, exhale right side. Both hands down, inhale. Drop the fingertips, hold the breath, exhale. And again, block left, inhaling. And just do it at your own pace. One more time.
coming back to center in an empty body meditation. We'll do the Bumpachan with the four steps. So first step is the slow inhale, slow and smooth inhale. Second, holding and filling below the navel. And number three, churning. The clockwise. Counterclockwise. And then fourth step, exhale. <coughs> so shoot in the breath out. Can to keep going. So the inhales are sm slow and smooth, and the exhales short and fast. And only exhaling about one third of the breath. Just one more. <laughs> and bring them in and out through the nostrils. The purpose of the, this is called Vajra Fist. So Vajra Fist, Vajra means like indestructible. So it's, it's a question of these channels. So from the four fingers and from the four toes, because when you block these channels, you actually um, protect your law energy. So law energy is like a very subtle form of your, your energy, your like life force. And it's said that it can leak out from these channels, and also it's the channels where, where some influences from the exterior can come in. So when you hold your fists like this, it's like a protection. Please. 
<laughs> oh, but I didn't catch you say that. This, this gesture is a Vajra gesture? Yeah, Vajra fist. This is the ring finger? The ring finger, yeah. That's all the other fingers are just extended? Yeah, the other fingers wrap around like a fist. I like that. And the, this one can stay, the four index finger I can see. either stay okay. out or, yeah. I like that. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of fists like that, I think. You can yeah. close them all. Yeah, you can close them all or you can point towards the, towards yeah. the central yeah. channel. Yeah. That's good. There's another one we can do. There's another one that we can do. That's a little different. But very similar in the same ballpark while well, everybody's breathing. Yeah. It's called uh, Vajra repetition. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very advanced uh, perfection stage thing where um, once you've opened the channels a little bit with that breathing that you do, that you did, you then uh, imagine or visualize that your central channel is open, the knots around it are have been released and relaxed. And that uh, in the center of the heart chakra, there's an upside down letter whom. That's, uh, you, you can just imagine, or you can just imagine that there's a, a letter there. And uh, it's actually an upside down written whom. And uh, when you inhale through the nostrils, you inhale, the inhalation itself is om. Of Varochana Om, that is white, and comes in with a white light. And so you inhale Om, and you, at first, of course, you're thinking Om as you're inhaling with the nostrils, ideally. But eventually, the idea is that the inhalation itself is Om, Om. So you don't have to divide between the sound or the image of the letter Om or the, and the breath, because the breathing in is Om. Okay, if you follow so you work toward trying to unify the mantra and the breathing and the breath. So you inhale OM and then you imagine that that white energy is going in and goes inside the letter home in the heart center and then you hold your breath for some time, just you know, some seconds, 10 seconds or something. And you imagine that when the breath is being held, that the the own inhalation turns into an ah ruby red. It's the sound ah. Remember the second syllable, the red and the Tava one? Ah, right? But you what you don't enunciate anything. The simple holding of the breath, of the energy of the breath in the home of the heart is the sound ah. So and it radiates a red light that fills up your body from that point in the center of the heart chakra. So then as you're holding your breath, you, it is, or you hear, ah, and you fill up with red light. And then, at whatever moment, as we say 10 seconds, or however you like to practice holding the breath, you exhale, and the exhalation is a deep blue home. And again, you're working toward the non-duality, the non-separation of the own and the inhalation. The so, ah uh, and the holding of the energy point at the center of the heart chakra, back in front of the spine at the height of the heart, not on the left side of the heart, in the middle, but the center of the, the central channel there. And then when you inhale, you exhale, the exhalation is a blue hole. Okay, and you try to unify those three om ah hom with inhalation, holding, and exhalation. And you try to think of the energy going in and out of this home in the central channel. So it's a little complicated when you first hear it, but it's really quite easy. In other words, inhaling is white om, holding full of breath is red ah. And in a way, I guess you would say the spread of oxygen from the inhalation in the system, you are thinking of as a glowing red light that is shining throughout your, throughout the universe actually, but at least throughout your body. And ah, 
and then the exhalation is the blue home. Then you get home. If you don't hold it at the end of the exhalation, you immediately inhale home. Okay, so try that a few times. Inhaling home. And you can hold it as long or short as you like, you know, without doing anything in unison. And that's called Vajra repetition or Vajra recitation, although you don't make any sound other than the breathing itself. Actually, you should be in the digging. You should be uh, already in um, a divine body, you know, a divine Buddha body. When you do that practice, I think you know you've already achieved. In other words, a kind of creation stage stability, where you are able to visualize yourself as having a Tara body or a Rajasattva body or whatever. Ideally. But there's a, I have a funny, nice story. A friend of mine, Dan Goldman, uh, was stuck years ago in Dharamsala, and his the planes were all canceled, and there was no chance to get a train ticket from the 40 mile away like railroad line. And so he had to take a taxi to Delhi to catch a flight. Uh, very arduous in those days. The roads were bad, 17 hour, very bumpy, very bad drive in, in a rattling taxi. We packed, it, packed into it for four other people in the old Indian ambassador car. And some monk told him, well, to make it less, less of a horrible journey, because he knew then was a, had practiced, you know, Vipassana type meditating, uh, he said, uh, why don't you inhale on, wide on, hold the breath a little bit, breathe ah, and exhale as a blue home. And then try to focus on that and not be irritated by all the <laughs> jangling, jostling of the driving. Of course, there was no tantric nothing, so I didn't really explain it, he just said, well, I'm trying to. So Dan claimed that he did that. And by the time he went to Delhi, he was like floating through the hidden. It was somehow the enforced pressure the, the taxi and the annoying environment made him do that. Oh, get a little, get a little. Lotus. 
<laughs> I'm sorry to go uh, yeah, think I will, in, in the honor of talking. Think I have honor of talking. In the honor of talking again, I wore a special t-shirt <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> you see my t-shirt, Emma? Yuck, yuck, yuck. That's my professor t-shirt. Yuck, 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 yuck. She's a real yuck, yuck t-shirt. I'm a real yuck. <laughs> Someone gave that to me. I don't know if they were hinting at something. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> yeah, support. <laughs> so that's uh, called the Vajra repetition. And they say if you if you know how to do that really, as uh, Ben says, if you do it 1,080 times every morning when you wake up, your central channel will open and you'll be you'll, 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 you'll really great. You'll be in a great state. I didn't quite make that quite yet. But it's, uh, it's uh, one of the very second stage of the perfection stage. In the place of okay, so we're going to please, what do we do now? So, uh, dream yoga. No. Dream yoga. Dream yoga, okay, you, please. First, uh, the text. The text to where you have that white, that white paper. Well, my copy was over there. Can you use your copy? Okay, thank you. Thank you. I can use some of it. Alright, so dream yoga, uh, we have few uh, steps in dream yoga. Okay. So step one is daytime practice. During the daytime, first eating, dressing, walking, sitting or sleeping, now we are in a sitting uh, state. At any given moment of life, imagine I am sleeping. I am sleeping. Seven times. I am sleeping. 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 I am dreaming. 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 I am sleeping dreaming. We imagine that it is a dream and that everything is an illusion. What is this? An illusion. Dream of the That's a dream battle. Dream battle. Can you say that seven times? Dream battle. 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 Dream come up. Dream come up. Dream come up. Dream come up. Dream finger up. We call this the dream finger. Yes, dream finger. Yes, dream yoga. Dream finger up. I'm happy. I'm happy in dream. 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 I'm 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 I'm happy in dream. I I'm happy. I'm angry in dream. 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 
I'm jealous in dream. I'm jealous in dream. I'm jealous in dream. I'm jealous in dream. I'm jealous in dream. I'm jealous in dream. I'm jealous in dream. I'm confused 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 in dream. Okay, what's your main desire now? What's your main desire? Lucid. Lucid, you can lucid. Wake up. 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 Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. In that chocolate? <laughs> Besides chocolate. Wake up. Wake up. How, how do you say chocolate, the desire? Somebody offered some dream chocolate. <laughs> oh, dream <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> I want to eat chocolate in dream. 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 Stronger ladies. I want to eat chocolate in dream. I want to eat chocolate in dream. I want to eat chocolate in dream. Okay, now you imagine. Now you give to me. Oh, oh. <laughs> This is called the empowerment. You imagine, okay? <laughs> you imagine you are eating chocolate. <laughs> chocolate empowerment. Do you see? Eating chocolate. Green chocolate. Now you eat, eat. <laughs> okay, it's full of sugar. Full of bad stuff, but you can eat how much you want. Eat, eat. How many you want? Yes, yes. Eat. Green chocolate. 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 Green Green cheese. Green meeting. 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 Green meeting.
your Danubian awareness, your Princeton wisdom, original consciousness, do you remember? Arises as Guru Amitabha. So your awareness and the nature of Guru and nature of Buddha Amitabha is the same. There is no difference. The nature of your consciousness is infinite light. The Guru Yuto is infinite light and Buddha Amitabha is infinite light. There is no division. Alright, in separate world. In union and one sun size, two fingers wide. Right. In his heart there is a coral colored what syllable? Ah. Twenty-one times, twenty-one times, okay? Each time when you say, ah, you think of the syllable. So mantra visualization, on the four petals times the four syllables, Amitabha, in any color you choose. Guru Amitabha's concert offering him the great bliss. <coughs> Pray, uh, prayer or aspiration, recite, may I able to catch the dream. Can you say that three times? May I be able to catch a dream. May I be able to catch a dream. May I be able to catch a dream. To realize my own awareness within the dream. To realize my own awareness within the dream. To realize my own awareness within the dream. To dream from the dream. To transform the dream. To transform the dream. To transform the dream. To avoid the fear in the dream. To avoid fear in the dream. To avoid fear in the dream. To avoid fear in the dream. And to understand the truth of 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 the dream. Okay, then this is the visualization. So here we put it in different colors, but it's, you can put any colors how you want, okay? But main syllable is red A. So you know that A is the main syllable of Dream Yoga. But the mantra is Om Anuttara. So after you have recited the prayer, and the one is to chant on mantra Om Amitara, visualize that red light like that of the uh, raising sun radiator from the Guru's body, it means Buddha Amitabha's body, eliminating all bad karmas and provocations from your body. Your body is filled with a red light which then expands beyond it. Are you realizing? Red light here, Omanutara, Omanutara, mentally you chant Omanutara, and then you listen and follow the meditation. Red light like that, the sun, rising sun, radiates from the body of the Buddha, or the Buddha, eliminating all bad karmas and provocations from your body. And your body is filled with red light, which then expands beyond it. All of the space becomes a pure land, and all sentient beings become dakas and dakinis. The light is offered to all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So the light is becoming an offering for Buddhas, and becoming a help and support for all sentient beings. That's why all sentient beings they become dakas and dakinis, or male Buddhas and female Buddhas. The light to return to the Guru's heart, Buddha Amitabha's heart, and then the eye becomes a very radiant and colorful. Focus your mind on this. Are you meditating? In dream? I'm waiting you just to follow you will make it used to it, okay? Get used to it. You are visualizing the light returns to the Guru's heart and then the R becomes very radiant and colorful.
focus your mind on this in your third chakra. Try to see that the word A in your third chakra. The word A in English is A, right? A. See it very clearly, very sharply. And concentrate on it as if you are threading a needle. Actually, it's good. The English A has a hole, not like a needle, right? On the top, there's a little triangle. Try to think that little triangle very carefully. Just before you fall asleep, <coughs> remind yourself 21 times, verbally or mentally, to cut your pain. Catching dream means what? <coughs> lucid. Lucid, right? Yeah. Catching dream. That's a Tibetan expression. Catching dream <coughs> to become lucid. Lucid dream. So you can tell yourself you want to have lucid dream. You want to be lucid in the dream? What do you say? What do you say? I want to be lucid in the dream. I want to be lucid in the dream. I want it to be lucid in the dream. Okay, you say that mentally, mentally. I want to what? I want to be lucid in the dream. Lucid. I want to be lucid in the dream. That is it. I want to recognize I am in the dream. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to be aware that I am in the dream. I want to recognize that I am in the dream. Much I want to identify myself in the dream. I want to recognize it. I want to be awake in the dream. I want to be in the dream. More than just being awake in the dream, it's recognizing what it's doing. I like catch. I want to be lucid in the dream. I want to be lucid in the dream. I want to be lucid in the dream. Lucid in the dream. Okay, did you say that 21 times? Alright, if you fall asleep mindfully, you will be able to catch the dream. That is, you will be able to have a lucid dream. If you cannot catch it, it's because of weak devotion or dense karma. And a lack of desire, courage and effort on your part. Be more mindful and pray more from your inner heart. You pray to Medicine Buddha or pray to Buddha Amitabha or pray to Buddha. Okay? Pray, pray, ask Buddha or Buddha to bless you, help you. That you have all to catch your dream. Did you do the prayer? How did you do it? Please, you talk blessing. Please, medicine Buddha blessing. Something very simple, okay? If you still cannot catch the dream, after repeating this visualization of Guru in the throat few times, or few times, I told you this had to be one month, right? When you visualize the Guru, in the head, heart, navel, and the base. Now you know it, right? So all those are uh, yuto, they are manifesting. Yuto is manifesting in the form of different Buddhas. Firstly, yuto is manifesting as infinite Buddha, infinite light Buddha in, in our throat. So if we can't receive the blessing from there, then we change it to here in the head. In the head, Buddha, Yuto is manifesting as a Buddha Verachana. Is it written there? Mm -hmm. Buddha Verachana. Another second month. If it's not working, the third month is Buddha Akshodhya, or Medicine Buddha, okay? Or any other Buddha Buddhas, Medicine Buddha, Akshodhya, Samandabhadra, Vajradhara, the Blue Buddha in the heart, third month. If still not that, that one is not helping, then the yellow Buddha, Ratna Sambhava. That's fourth month. If still not working, then uh, Amada Siddhi, fifth one. Okay? If it's still not working, 
When you give up Gun Yoga, <laughs> then you come back to Ati Yoga, okay? Ati Yoga is now and here. I told you this morning, Ati Yoga is now and here. Any moment, any given moment, you can always do Ati. Any given moment, you can do Ati, okay? You will make it the mind. Free from past, free from future, free from present. One false consciousness. Do you remember? One false consciousness. <clears throat> okay, and then after Ati Yoga, your dream will become lucid by itself. Do you understand? Because when you are lucid in the life, in the dream you are lucid too. All right. Normally, in the dream, it's easy to become lucid. Dream yoga is easy. Once you're very good with dream yoga, and real life, you can become lucid too. But it's it's up to you. Okay, it's up to you. So if you uh, wake up after you have caught the dream, do not open your eyes. Normally, once you caught the dream, very easy to wake up, and especially with excitement. And keep them, uh, keep your eyes closed and remain mindful and relax. Okay, relax. Don't push yourself too much. Oh, I almost got it, and now I wake up. Oh, <laughs> don't, don't. Uh, how do you say? Don't give you pressure. Don't, don't give self pressure. Don't push yourself too much. Just be mindful. Oh, I had a dream. I become lucid. I woke up. Okay, what can I do? <clears throat> Try to sleep again. Okay. Mindful and relax. In the matter, you'll be all in. In this matter, you will come all of the problems of not catching the dream or waking up. As opening eyes, distracting. Okay, and then we have five chakras, and now we should read this part. Transforming the dream. Uh, can you read this part? Purification, transforming the dream. Yeah. Purification, multiplication, and transformation. Once you have a stable basis in catching dreams, that is what you can do it frequently. You can do purification, multiplication, and transformation. Close your eyes and listen, listen. You will then be able to catch them at will, and your dream recognition then becomes a stable experience. During the daytime of the meditation, imagine that you are in the dream, and that you need to transform all experiences. Imagine that there is a dream fire that does not burn you. Dream water that does not flood you. Dream cliff that you will never fall off, etc. Imagine you can do everything at will. Do the same meditation with wild animals and evil spirits. Dream animals cannot attack you, and dream spirits can do you no harm. Do this practice constantly, so that you will be able to do the same in the dream. Before falling asleep, keep applying these meditation thoughts. When you have caught the dream, you can do everything you did in the daytime exercise. For example, if you imagine an animal attacking you during the daytime, then you strongly think, this is a dream animal which cannot attack me. So nothing can attack or harm me. Imagine a bear is attacking you. Bear! <laughs> If you see an animal in the dream, it's a dream. You do exactly the same. Imagine a tiger is attacking you. <laughs> it's a dream. In this manner, think of whatever you see or experience during the daytime as a dream. Close your eyes and imagine. Close your in the eyes dream, believe that you can do anything. Close your eyes and imagine. Don't read the text. Imagine water transforms into fire and fire transforms into water. Imagine a fire, it's become water. Imagine a water, become fire. You can play with them. You can change objects at will. A rock become a tree, a tree become a rock. 
change everything from 100 to 1,000 times. One flower become 10, 10 flower become 100, 100 become 1,000. Can you imagine? Yes, you can imagine. Just very fast. Boop, 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 boop. It's very fast, automatic. Don't stop with the numbers. If you see sentient beings, imagine that they are your deity and multiply them. All birds are Buddha, medicine Buddha, all insect, all flies, all human beings, everything, all sentient beings are Buddhas, different colors, different shapes. The deity goes from one up to countless, can be multiplied infinitely. Multiply yourself too. You can become 10,000, 100,000, million, 10 million, billion, and countless. Can you do it? Oh, yes. Once you are relaxed, yes. I told you, don't get stuck. Why? How? When? There's no questions. Just do it. Just do it! <laughs> you are dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> Antidote. If you encounter demons in the dream, for example, you experience a negative feeling or presence or odor, in order to subdue them, visualize their opponents. For Gyalbo spirits, visualize yourself as Hayagiva. For Za spirits, planet spirits, visualize Vajrapani. For Naga, Naga visualize Naga Raksha, serpent dragon being. Imagine all snakes, spiders, frogs, fish, sea animals. They are coming and attacking you, but you realize it's a dream. They all vanish like the air, like the light. In the, in the same way, if you encounter a dog, visualize a wolf. If dog is attacking you. <coughs> if you like that dog, you can multiply that dog. Visualize for a wolf, visualize a tiger. If wolf is attacking you, what you will say? You will say, <coughs> tiger. For a tiger, visualize a lion. Etc. <laughs> Whatever that's animal that's a you snow see. Line. That's a snow line. <laughs> that is no time. Whatever animal you see, you can always visualize a stronger animal conquering the previous one. Can you say, I can conquer? I can conquer. Loudly. I can conquer. 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 I can I can I can transform in dream. 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 I can transform my feelings 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 in dream. Did it transform? Unhappiness transform into happiness. Bad feeling transform into good feeling. Even natural feeling, natural feeling, I call it potato feeling. You know, you're not feeling happy, not happy. Even potato feeling, you can transform into a bliss feeling. I can transform potato feeling into bliss. <laughs> 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 Potato 
change your feeling into bliss feeling. I can transform my anger in dream. I can transform my anger into joy. Anger transform in joy? Yeah. I can transform my anger into joy. I can transform my I can transform anger into joy. <laughs> and dream. Huh? And dream. <laughs> okay, repeat, repeat seven times. I can transform anger into joy. I can transform anger into joy. Stronger. You have to say this with your anger. Yes, yes. Can you show us? Can you come here? In the dream, you are not. How do you say? I'm not shy. Yeah. I'm not shy. I'm not shy in the dream. I'm not shy in the dream. I'm not shy in the dream. I'm brave in the dream. I transform my shyness into bravery. I can transform anger into joy. One more, more. Seven times. Into joy in the dream. I can transform anger into joy in the dream. I can transform anger into joy in the dream. I can transform anger into joy. More anger, please. More I can anger. transform anger. No, that's better. That's American anger. More, once more. I can transform anger. <laughs> okay, very, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Who else is angry? Who else is angry? <laughs> And if I'm angry, she is very helpful, yeah? <laughs> she helped us to bring out our anger. Okay, who is sad? Who is sad? Who is stressed? Who is feeling tension, tension? Who is feeling tension? <laughs> now you are scared. Yeah? <laughs> you don't want to come publicly. <laughs> Yeah, we're all bliss. Oh, yeah? Really? Ah, okay. Then dream yoga is working. Yeah. I can dream yoga is working. I can do what? You can do what? Okay, okay. Travel to pure land. Travel to pure land. Yes. Pure land farm. <laughs> you can visit any pure land you want to and listen to any of Buddha's teaching. You can ride the sun and moon to visit okay. the four continents. Okay, close your eyes. Close your eyes and you can fly the into the space and ride the sun. You can, yes, you can visit the And riding the sun coming back here, back and forth, back and forth, few times. Then you say, oh, okay, I'm get bored of sun, riding the sun. <laughs> and now you fly to the moon, okay? You can ride any stars, planets you want. Imagine, just imagine, you see? This one helps us breaking our concept of the distance and the space. If there is when, you think, you when, you, when you think you are there, when you think you are there, the sun is not the scientifically says, oh, like a hundred of uh, thousand of uh, years, the light, light uh, years we have to reach there. In dream yoga, you want to say, I want to see right the sun. When you say it, you're already right top of the sun. If it's too hot, you can cool it down. <laughs> because you can conquer, right? Right, in the dream. Okay, pure land, pure land. Pure land. Virajana Kamsa, Indikala, Sukhavati. Sukhavati, Ramitabha. Okay, imagine last life. First, the pure land is Buddha Amitabha, the one our dream, dream Buddha, right? Three. Okay, one, two, three. Can you say Sukhavati? Sukhavati. You're already there. Again. Sukhavati. Again. Sukhavati. Sitting in the lunar. Stronger. Sukhavati. It's in the west, and I don't get the wrong directions. Sukhavati. Sukhavati. Shoot yourself. Sukhavati. Sukhavati all the time. Sukhavati. Okay, now imagine. Don't write. Don't write notes. You don't need to write notes. Don't write notes. Sukhavati. I mean, that was pure land. There are no papers. No pens. He's a thousand miles tall. You are a hundred miles tall. Your body is made of pure energy. And your body is made of orgasmic energy. 
the city in a lotus and taking chocolate from the air. <laughs> the air is made of jewel now chocolate. You're, pure land means paradise, okay? Now you enjoy the paradise. Um, paradise. Yes, yes. Professor is explaining how, how it is. I'm teaching and you completely understand. But there's no effort. <laughs> It's beautiful, sitting in lotus. All your friends are there. Couldn't be more beautiful. Amitabha. Pure land. Yes, that's your question. Um, my question is, when you are in a lucid state, can you go into clear light from there? Can you open a door and go into the clear light from that space? Of course. Go into which light? Clear light? Into clear light. Yeah, the question is... You can never go into clear light because you're always in clear light. Uh -huh. <laughs> can you not in clear light. dissolve your you sense need, of eye? You only need to recognize. Clear light is what you're made of, so you can't go into it. But you can go into Sukhavati. Pure ruby, golden, jewel light. You yeah. have questions later, okay? Now just to meditate. Imagine you are in that uh, Sukhavati, Devachan, the pure land made of bliss or joy. Yes. Whatever comes in your head, what is the, the, the imagination, your imagination of uh, paradise? This Sukha Vati Sukha is like Maha Sukha, great bliss. It's a filled with bliss, full of flowers, and it's really like your dreamland. Mm -hmm. And you receive teaching directly from the Buddha. Again, the imagination, just imagine. You are dreaming, in the dream you reach the pure land, the paradise. Yes. The Buddha Amitabha. If you can remember, Monet's water lilies, painting, giant painting. He was inspired by Sukhavati Pure Land. He saw a Japanese picture and he painted water lilies in France. If you've ever seen that water lilies. That was inspiration by Monet, the French painter of Sukhavati. Sukhavati is described in Sutra, mind-blowing. Orgasmic ecstasy as flowers, as jewels, as, as beings. Pure, luminous, jewel energy light. You can feel unloved in this paradise, you are hundred percent loved. You can go anywhere. If you feel you are the unwanted, in this pure land is your pure land. If you wish to see anyone who is far away, you can transform into a bird and travel to see them. Even if a person has passed away, you can see that person in the past time. You can fly into the past, you can fly into the future. Whatever it is that you want to do, you can do. And you dream. If your dream is unclear, this means you have to be more mindful before sleeping. Keep the mind strongly focused on the visualization of the guru at the throat, etc. Anuttara, Anuttara, Anuttara. Amitabha, Anuttara, Amitabha. Pandara, Amitabha's partner's name is Pandara Vasini, who always wears white you know, over her ruby body. Pandara, is the name. Uh, before you sleep, constantly imagine many times that you visit the pure land. And this way will slowly become clearer and clearer. You will eventually succeed. Then boom ba jen, wild breathing. If you catch the dream, but your transformation is weak, it means that your room, your neural energy practice is insufficient. Therefore, the practice of Bhubhajan, of loud breathing, is important. When you visualize the navel chakra, the 64 petal chakra back in front of the spine, the coccyx, is your navel chakra, like an upside down umbrella with 64 petals. You have to put your neural energy lumen and consciousness there mentally in the center of that. 
If you cannot go through earth in the dream, then you have to push your energy down from the navel during your yoga practice. If you cannot fly, you have to pull your neural energy lung and consciousness upward from the navel. If you cannot fly horizontally, push your energy and consciousness in that direction. And it says Nilam here in Dr. Nilam's calligraphy. No, he my friend. Yeah, what? No. That's your calligraphy, right? No, my friend's calligraphy. Your friend? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot travel or if you cannot transform, then we have to do this uh, last print yoga, last yoga. So we did the uh, last yoga already yeah, this morning. We did that. And here. Uh, you are ready and you hold it there, okay? And now you imagine you go this way. You go out from the wall. Okay, go through the wall, the wall or window, doesn't matter, and come back. Seven times, okay? Okay, exhale. And you have. Imagine go up. One, come back. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, come back here, exhale. Okay, and have that side, go through the wall. Do you understand? The wall is here, we are here, we will go, we go through the wall outside and come back like this. Penetrating the wall. Okay, again, go. Hold, go out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, come back, exhale. Okay, now you fly out from the roof. Okay, inhale. Go up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Come back, exhale. How is it? Okay, again, go out from the roof. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, come back, exhale. Now you should penetrate the floor, okay? Just go into the earth and come back. Or if you want, you go into the earth, make a hole for this planet, come out other side of the planet, and then come back here, okay? All right, anyone? Hold your last. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale. So can I just do one extra? <laughs> okay, so if you cannot transform something, you, you see a flower, you want to transform into a tree, it doesn't work. So again, breathe in, hold the last breath, and then you imagine you're transforming it. Transform it. Transforming, transforming, and then you exhale. So when you hold the last breath in, it helps our mind for, what do you say, easy to transform. Okay? So it's called the energy is supporting the mind. Or uh, energy is enhancing the mind. And the mind is able to make these things. Mm -hmm. So that's why the conversion is very important. You should know it well. And if you do a dream yoga retreat, so we have to chant this mantra, Om Anuttara. Mm -hmm. Minimum is 100,000 times. Seven days, you have to finish. Om Anuttara, Om Anuttara, Om Anuttara, Om Anuttara, Om Anuttara. So we should have the Buddha Anuttara or Yuta, then that reminds you. And in your bedroom, you put the uh, red Buddha, red, red object, red artworks. Okay, the red ones are reminding you the red Buddha here in your throat. So you have to be seven days of mindful, Hamanitara 100,000 times, and then you have to do this Dumbajan. Dumbajan, uh, let's say, 400 times. Morning 100, afternoon 100, evening 100, people sleep 100, something like that.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's called the dream work. That's called the dream work. Transformation, multiplication. First, we have to make sure we are good for transforming. Okay? Once you are very good for transforming, then you do the multiplication. Sometimes that takes time. Sometimes it takes time. But once you are really good with transformation, then you can make the multiplication. Okay? Transformation what is happening here, you know. There's a book and you transform it into a glass. Glass with water and without the water. And then become a flower, then become a leaf. So this object here, something happened in this space here. Okay? You see the space is going to be small. But we need the multiplication, 100 glasses. So it can be like this way, or can be this way, or can be this way, or can be everywhere 100. When you say 1,000, it is expense more. When you say 1 million glass, normally you get less threat. But in the dream, if you say 1 million glass, you see them all clearly. Okay? And then if you say one, they become one. Any number you say, they can manifest. So that's why the more you know the dream yoga, the more you will be amazed to your mental power. Okay? You see, the, the real thing is, we have so much power, we have so much potential, and we have so much energy and force, but we don't know how to use it. And then this energy runs is a karmic wind, karmic wind and our um, emotions, mental emotions, somehow the energy runs in one way. That's why we're not enjoying the dreams. Okay? And in the chakra system we are supposed to enjoy the dreams. That's why this chakra is called the chakra of enjoyment. Enjoyment. Sounds good, Karsil. No. Sanskrit. 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 Enjoyment. Enjoyment? Uh, Samboga. Mantra of the game. Mantra. Samboga chakra. Samboga chakra. Boga. Samboga. Boga means to enjoy. Enjoy. Boga. 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 For enjoyment. And also the word for orgasm. Samboga. Is that true? In Kama Sutra. Samboga. Do you enjoy your dream? Yes. Really? You really enjoy? Mm -hmm. Do you eat all your chocolate there? <laughs> then there's no sugar problem, right? No. <laughs> mm -hmm. So chakra of enjoyment. And the most powerful enjoyment we can have in the dream. Okay? most powerful enjoyment we can have in the dream. Any kind of enjoyment, anything you desire. Okay? Let's say you enjoy drinking alcohol. In the dream, you can drink how many bottles you want. Okay? The best wine in the world, and you drink hundreds of thousands of bottles. When you wake up, you have no more. <laughs> And it's free. <laughs> okay? So it's really it's interesting. This chakra is called enjoyment. Mm -hmm. And there are so many things we think we can't enjoy, you know, because of this and that. But in the dream, we can really enjoy whatever we want. For instance, sometimes in the dream, we dream a very, very nice shop, you know. In this shop, you can see anything you want food or clothes, whatever you want, everything's there, right? And most of the kids you don't buy, why? Right? Because you have no money in the dream. <laughs> and you know, I don't want to buy this, it's too expensive, this is this and that, right? That's quite stupid. <laughs> in the dream, everything is a free. You are already in that show, that's your show, and you see everything you like, they are all your stuff, right? <laughs> and why you get stuck, you are saying, oh, I have no money, I can't buy it. You are all free. Or if you want money, you can multiply your money. 
from 0 to 1, from 1 to 100, 100 to 1,000, 1,000 to a million and billion. And you can pay. You can pay yourself. Okay? And sometimes we see also very nice restaurants, very delicious food. We say, oh, I already ate and I don't want to eat now. Or maybe it's not the right time, or maybe this is too expensive, I don't want to eat. This is very fun conditions, right? It's all food there. Actually, the food and the drink, they are more tasty than real food. Mm -hmm. Okay, because in the drink, if you are hungry, you can eat anything. With my drink of experience, once I was in Zurich, in Switzerland, and dream, in the dream also I was in Zurich. I went to, I was in a restaurant and eating a pasta. The pasta was very good. I was eating and then I realized I was dreaming. I said, the pasta is good, the, the dish must be good too. I started to eat the dish. That's a better than pasta. <laughs> then I realized, ah, oh, wow, it's enjoyment. In the dream you can eat anything. They are also tasty, right? So the truth is the pasta and the plate, there is no difference. The pasta is my mind and the plate is my mind, the table is my mind. And then I really felt like I am stronger than Chinese. Normally the Chinese, they eat everything. They say plate and tables, right? I eat even plate and table. <laughs> <laughs> I eat more than them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you are not enjoying your life, don't worry. Okay? I also say this. If you really want to go to a holiday, the best of holiday, the best and cheapest is a dream holiday. <laughs> yes, you can go to Poland, you can go to visit the Buddha, you rest there, you enjoy. You receive teachings and then you come back, next day you wake up. You're completely refreshed. Okay? So remember that's the name of this chakra. The chakra of enjoyment. Okay? It's much more than enjoying the food and enjoying speaking or singing. Do you understand? For us, speaking and singing, using our words, it's enjoyment too. And eating and drinking is our third chakra enjoyment. But our life is much more than that. So that's why this chakra is connected with desire. Desire. Infinite desire, infinite enjoyment. What you can do it? Enjoy. You can do it in dream. Once you get the satisfaction in the dream and then you wake up and then you don't need to do it. In real life, in real life you're not craving. But I told you the, the mighty story. When I was doing children, I was so hungry, and in the dream I was eating everything. <laughs> Next day I was full. Yes. And then many other days I didn't eat anything, just the children product. And yeah, it was very, very, very nice. Mm -hmm. So I think many things we should, uh, how do you say, the things we cannot do in the life, we should do in the dream. Mm. Our life has so many conditions and limitations, but in the dream, there are no conditions and no limitations. So why don't you enjoy it? Okay? And our problem is, I'm in the heart, right? Heart. So we are doing dream yoga. That's why to become lucid is number one. We have to become lucid. The lucid is number one. Once you become lucid, then anything we can do. It's the other world. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then we can understand the concept of God, the Creator. Right? We are saying that there is a God, God is creating us. But in the dream, we will find out who is the God. Who is the Creator? Who is this great Creator who creates everything? You will discover that. Okay? That's why in your prayer says, May I understand the truth of the dream. The truth of the dream is the truth of God. 
this kind of things to look at. Okay, that's about June 11. And can you uh, explain us about the uh, five uh, visitors? Oh, sure. Um, yes, and then we do some practical parts. Okay. So the uh, five winners are transmutation of the five poisons. And they are the representatives, we could say, of the five poisons transmuted into wisdom. You are listening in vain. Mm -hmm. And um, the Vairochana is very, very famous because he is the body of all Buddhas. He is the letter, he is the syllable Om, and he's usually white in color. And there are some differences in different, but Anuttara Yoga Tantra. He's the body of all Buddhas and he's white. And um, he's also the special Buddha. Uh, Rochana means to shine. Uh, Ruch is a Sanskrit word meaning to shine. And so Vairochana is, means a great shining one. And uh, he's like this, he's associated with the sun actually. In Japan, the giant Buddha in Kamakura called the Daibutsu is a Vairochana. And he's the main Buddha of the um, flower ornament or the Buddha Garland Sutra. He's the main Buddha of that. And Shakyamuni Buddha is considered like an emanation of him. And um, his wisdom, his poison is the ignorance or confusion. Although, in a way, the best translation of Aridya is misknowledge. A misknowing. It's an actively wrong knowing. The way we know things, you know, because in a way, confusion is one aspect of ignorance, but the bigger aspect is you know you're an ordinary person and you're suffering and you're dissatisfied and you're whatever, you know, ordinary and you have pain and you're going to die and you're, you know, this kind of thing. So you know that you are that. You think that's reality. But that's misknowing. And when you see the floor, you think that it's really the floor. You don't think it's a dream floor. So you misknow it as some sort of solid thing itself, an intrinsically real floor. But the, but the wisdom then, the amazing power of the transformation of the Buddha dream, let's say, is that even that you misknow the floor, that reflects to you the reality of the floor. So it's called the mirror-like wisdom. Your ignorance is a mirror of wisdom, in other words, because wisdom is more true knowing, is more powerful than misknowing. And wisdom is more powerful than confusion. And uh, why? What the floor is, is only relative to your mind. The floor seems to be out there outside of your mind. But the fact that you can see it means it's relative to your mind. So the fact that you can see it wrongly as if it was outside of your mind reflects the fact that correctly it is related to your mind. As, uh, and, and, and particularly Gedla, when he's very hungry, he can eat the floor. <laughs> because it's his mind. And whereas we couldn't eat the floor, you know, misknowing because we think it's a thing in itself out there that's not to be eaten. So this is the mirror-like mirror wisdom which has this diamond white-like quality. And it is, the, it is the wisdom that is that the emblem, the head of the family of, there's many wisdom of Buddhas, divine type of Buddhas. And Lugochana is one, female one, who is the main partner of my Rochana. Her name is Lochana or Buddha Lochana. And Lochana means the eye. So she is the Buddha eye, is what she is and uh, meaning sort of the, the awareness, the visual awareness of all things, you know. And then um, there are many, um, uh, Maitreya is a member of the, of the Buddha, that, that the Varochana Buddha family, and Kshitigarpa, the earth store Bodhisattva, is a member of that in the present Buddha Samajam, esoteric community. 
So anyway, so that's where we're in the beginning of the Torah community. We had some Maja, Rotana is there, and then all the other Buddhas turn into females to please him, and then they are absorbed into his body. Oh, it's an amazing uh, visual, you know, visionary sequence. And he's in the eastern gate of the unexcelled yoga tantra, which is the entryway gate, because we enter into wisdom through ignorance. Because it's opposite of ignorance. So that's by Rochana. Okay, then Amitabha is the passion or lust or desire. And um, as a poison. And as a wisdom, he turns that, he, he, that is turned into what uh, people usually say discriminating wisdom. You know, picking out one thing from another, differentiating one thing from another. But better translation by Lama Govinda, I think, was individuating wisdom. So that's because he's associated with the speech, like Amarochana is associated with his body. Uh, Amitabha, boundless light, or Amitayu, is another sort of coordinated that, which means boundless life, infinite life. <coughs> and um, so that's the speech of the Buddha, of all Buddhas. And it has a ruby color, and associated with the syllable ah, the long ah, you know, ah, ah, two ah, ah together make ah, and it ends with a, what's called a visarga, which is a ch sound. So ah, like that, and like that. And um, connected with throat chakra. And um, the, the whole thing about passion is the passion to join one thing with another. You know, sexual passion, you know, food passion, possession passion, you know, greed, lust, all of these things are a desire, they're all interconnected. Even the desire to be a Buddha is a, is a form of passion or desire. And uh, so, in a way, it, uh, the poison, it's a poison when you really think you're separate from other things, and you thereby want to join with some other thing that you're separate with. And the being who feels separate from the whole universe, of course, wants to join with the whole universe so they won't feel separate anymore, because feeling separate makes them feel afraid. The universe is bigger than they are, it's going to come and get them, and all this kind of thing. So it's a very, it's a kind of a hopeless case. But, but Amitabha is where the Buddha already, the, the wisdom of individuation is already based on knowing that all is one, that, uh, that there's no difference between anything, that a Buddha being is all connected with everyone. Everyone is completely one energy, really, clear light. But then, out of compassion with the other beings who are afraid and feel disconnected and alienated, Amitabha you turns that energy into individuating, into recognizing the feeling that the others feel and helping them by putting next to them an individual with which they can feel connected. So as to, you know, so therefore the Lotus family, which is the family of, of Amitabha, that's where Alvaro Viteshva, the Bodhisattva, which is the compassion, who is the compassion of all Buddhas, the great God who cares for the loving God, who cares for everyone, is what Avalokita, Avalokita means, who looks in a loving way at all beings. You know, not a, not a God, Ishvara means a God, and, uh, but who, who is the God who looks care, with caring eyes at all beings. Like he has thousand eyes, you know, one form of Avalokiteshvara, meaning the eyes of all thousand Buddhas. And seeing this pain of beings and wanting to see them into happiness. And so it's very much connected. The passion becomes compassion. And the Amitabha has the individuating wisdom that it makes, it makes things, makes individuals to pick out the suffering of beings and to make something that helps them to transcend and transform their suffering. So that's the Amitabha. Tara, for example, is a member of that Lotus family. And Hayagriva is the fierce form. For example, Guru Padmasambhava, who was a great uh, being, who went to console, he, he went to help the Tibetans, but before that, he consoled the Indians for, when Shakyamuni passed away from his body. So they, could, they thought he died, but it was Buddhas never died. 
But he thought they did. They, they, they thought he did, so they felt very forlorn because they felt Buddha had left them. So they were said, don't worry, somebody really great will come, better than me. And he was referring to Padmasambhava, who came from the tongue of Amitabha, the boundless light, because there was some sad thing going on on earth, is the legend. And, and Avalokiteshvara was there in heaven in Sukhavati with Amitabha, boundless light Buddha. And then the people on earth were having a horrible time because some tyrant king was really mad and he was going to be really harmful to people. So then Avalokiteshvara started scolding Amitabha. And he said, come on, Buddha, boundless light. Be healed so you're boundless light, but you're not doing anything for those beings on earth who are having this horrible time. So why don't you do something for them? You know? Because he's the compassion of all Buddhas, I mean, uh, this far, And he thought Amitabha was just being just too boundless with all his light that's sitting there. So then Amitabha stuck out his tongue. <laughs> Buddhas have big tongues. They can cover their whole face with their tongue. They have a special, a special sign of a Buddha. He stuck out his tongue, and then this five-colored rainbow meteor came shooting out of his tongue and landed on a lotus in a lake in front of the, that tyrant king's palace. And that was the Guru Padmasambhava. It was like a human form of a high actually. Fierce, kind of, more, a little more fierce than, and he's still alive. He lives in a copper-colored mountain, three-story house somewhere in Madagascar, I think. Or somewhere <laughs> somewhere knows exactly. But somewhere to the southwest of India. Or the continent, Indian subcontinent, he lives somewhere there, yeah, nobody knows where. But he's still there, you know. Maybe he lives in Wakanda. <laughs> if you saw it, like, <laughs> that's maybe the world which is uh, crystal power, you know, copper powers in mm. Wakanda. You can see it by the time you You have to take him to Wakanda. Black Panther. You have to take him to see Black Panther. Wow. <laughs> You'd be surprised. That's amazing. Anyway, that's the world. Okay, I'm sorry. Buddhism. So, so that's the discriminating or individuating wisdom, transmuting passion into the individual, creating individual forms of duty to help beings to bring them through their wish to unite with the universe into realization of their Buddhahood. So they unite with the, unite with the highest bliss of all, which is the bliss of perfect Buddhahood, Sambhogakaya, the total enjoyment uh, body of Buddhahood. Then the heart chakra, then at the heart chakra level you have Akshobhya, and Akshobhya means unshakable, unimmovable, like a mountain, like no one can move Akshobhya. And he's a dark blue, sometimes a black color, so dark blue it's almost black, like, like blue black ink, Parker's blue black ink. And uh, he is a uh, hatred. He is the one who takes the poisons of anger or hatred and he turns it into ultimate reality, perfection or purity, wisdom. So in a way, he, his, he, in the pattern of hatred is to destroy things. And so he is the mind of all Buddhas and the mind of all Buddhas destroys the world of suffering. Take analyzes it, it's connected to intelligence, which is always it deals with analysis. So it takes apart the world of the ignorance created world of suffering and it reveals that the world is perfectly marvelous, excellent, perfection, purity, super bliss, connected with clear light, with infinite power and energy. And that's like sugar and the heart, transforming hatred and anger into ultimate reality wisdom and perfection wisdom. And then, those are the three main ones, really, actually. Body, speech, and mind, Om Ah Hum. And his special mantra syllable is Hum. Hum. Mm -hmm. And Om um, Body, Ah, speech, Hum is mind. You know, white, you know, diamond, ruby, and deep sapphire. You know? Deep, dark sapphire, those are the three. And then, in yellow, in the navel chakra, is the Radha Sambhava and uh, the jewel mind that means, jewel source of jewels. And uh, Radha Sambhava is interconnected with Amitabha actually, in the sort of, because 
because pride or miserliness, which are the two poisons, uh, they kind of a little bit connect to desire and uh, and ignorance. So they're but but they're sort of have an association when you only do three Buddhas, always which in mind, but the Sambhava connects with Amitabha. And um, so he takes pride and miserliness, you know, sort of sense of closing in on yourself, which has a yellow golden color, uh, which can be the, either the color of gold, pure gold, or when it's pride, and when it's when it's miserliness, it's diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> so gold and shit that is connected to those two. And it transmutes them into the wisdom of total equality. There's no difference between excrement, feces, and gold uh, to the enlightened being. And, uh, and there are things like that. Actually, you know, did I tell you the story about the yogi in Banaras? Mm -hmm. There was a famous yogi, not Buddhist, but he was a great siddha anyway. And this happened in the 50s, and my friend told me about it. It was in the newspaper. And this yogi was annoying people who had restaurants in a certain place in Benares, because he lived in the kind of garden in India. They sometimes have in the middle of a street, you know, like a square. They have like a garden. They're usually very dusty and dirty, you know. But anyway, he lived there. And then the people, the restaurant people, had like outside tables, you know, and outside their restaurant. And then the, the customers weren't coming because this, this sort of fighting funky yogi was there. So the restaurant guys took him into court, and he was before the judge, and they were accusing him, and they said, you know, he pooped in this garden there, and then the people didn't want to come to my restaurant, and he's ruining my business, and I want him to be sent away and banished from that place, blah, blah, blah. And they were all accusing him. So he, he refused a lawyer, and he just sat there, and then the, the judge finally, after all the accusations, he said to the yogi, well, Swamiji, how can you defend yourself? What do you have to say for yourself? You're like making unpleasant things to other people. And uh, you know, there's all this impurity in the garden and people like that. And so he said, I need a plate and a knife and a fork, he said. So they brought him one of those Indian metal plates. <laughs> so then, he pooped in that plate right in the court. <laughs> and then he took his knife and his fork and he made a slap of the poop. And then he calmly sat there and he was eating it. And he said, there's nothing impure here. I don't see anything impure. What's the problem? And the judge, the Indian judge said, case dismissed. <laughs> nothing impure. And the restaurant people just have to, just to deal with it. <laughs> the famous story with all the papers. I'm sorry, that, that's India. <laughs> that's the dream of India. That's still, uh, that's uh, somewhere still, that's kind of wonderful, expect, you know, dealing with reality in a kind of tolerant manner. That's India. Okay. So, so anyway, that's the quality wisdom. And that is overcoming the high point of pride and the low point of miserliness. The, by making the wisdom of everyone is totally equal. And that's the true sign of a Buddha. Uh, a truly enlightened being is there to serve the students and the, the arhats and the bodhisattvas and the disciples, not there to be their boss. Because the Buddha does not feel higher than the beings who are still suffering. Because he realizes they're only suffering because they don't know their true nature is bliss anyway, to start with, always has been. So he or she or it, Buddhas can be male, female, or neuter, uh, is only, they don't need anything. They don't need to be higher or lower. They realize they're completely equal with all the beings that they're serving, except that the beings don't know that. So they want to help them come to understand it. So they really are the servants. I realized that once with His Holiness Dalai Lama, when he was speaking to a crowd in Switzerland, about 10,000 people, and he was giving the famous verse about how the Buddha was speaking to the monks, and he said, monks, a wise person accepts some teaching after like a goldsmith buys gold, after analyzing it, testing it in their experience, and deeply concentrating about it, and then accepting it if it works out, if it's correct and helpful, and not just out of faith in the teacher. He said, 
And so they're, they're I'm saying, sitting on the face roll, you know, right, like higher, like the higher dollar on the right, everybody's supposed to be lower than him. And he's leaning forward to his students, obviously he's sort of on the side there, leaning forward to them. And he says, therefore, he says, Buddhas, you have to understand, is like begging the student, don't just listen to what I say and say, oh, Buddha said so, so I think so. But, but challenge it in your mind and think about it and make it your own because it won't do you any good otherwise. And he says that Buddha's just begs, begging them to like, think about it, think it over, and don't just accept it because I said it. And the, the, the body language was like a waiter in a Chinese restaurant. Please take it something, you know, by the, the great Dalai Lama, you know. And that's when I realized how great he really is, you know, really fantastic. You know. And actually, there was a bunch of gurus on the stage on the other side from me, not just Buddhists, Buddhists and some Lamas and some Zen masters, they're all kind of gurus, you know, Christian one. And they look so nervous at that because they're all students probably in the audience, you know. And the Dalai was saying, the teacher is trying to serve the student and wants the student to do something, you know. And they have to do it, and the teacher can't do it for them. And he was showing, like, the humility of the teacher, do you know what I mean? Although he should be, of course, he can be very intellectual. He could be like, I'm now a Buddha, and I'm the give him initiation. He can do that too. But I mean, he, he showed that his true little sign of being really great. Whereas those gurus who act like, I'm smarter than all my students, and I know more than they do, and I'm so much better than them, usually are not so useful, that's all I'm saying. Sometimes they still can be, but they're not that useful. So that's the wisdom of equality. And then finally, you have the sexy one, Amoga Siddhi, which means the Toyotrava in Tibetan, and that means the one who never, it's never futile. Amoga means it's never in vain. The never in vain, the one who has achieved never be in vain. There was no non-futility. And he is the color of jealousy. He is the poison of jealousy, which is a combination of greed and hatred. Desire and hatred, you know, you want to be the person you're jealous of, and so you're angry with them at the same time that you're feeling a, a desire, a, a craving, a lust for whatever they are doing, and so on. Very, very dead. Connected with the genital chakra, the secret chakra, and a green emerald in color. And he turns that into, he represents the, the transmutation of that jealousy into uh, all accomplishing miracle working wisdom. Because the reason we can't perform miracles is because of our sense of, of separateness, you know, in a sense of we're not where we should be, and we're angry with someone who is where we think we should be, and we, we want to be someone else, and all this kind of thing. And so people who cannot get together because they're always competing, and they're always fighting each other, and they always have, have a zero-sum mentality. If I don't have it, I don't want them to have it and you know, this kind of thing, until they never can co co collaborate and cooperate and they can't work on a basis of being interconnected. And so green is the, uh, this green color of the, interesting, you know that guy in the Western thing, green-eyed monster means jealousy. Having a green eye means jealousy. It's interesting. But, have, but green, on the other hand, can accomplish everything. It's the color of the dollar bill. It's that which is still the global currency. It's the color of the emerald. And it's a, it's, a, it's a Dalai Lama's favorite color. Actually, it was Muhammad's favorite color, uh, green. You know, they have that green crescent, you know, as their red cross. And um, so those are the five wisdoms, you know. And uh, it's at the genital chakra, so among us in these kind of sexy, I think. Jealousy also comes about very strongly about sexuality, not just about, you know, lovers, but also about ex-lovers, but also about siblings, you know, about... Um, you know, in general, jealousy relates a little bit to sexuality, you know. So those are the five wisdoms, I think. And of course, what, one other thing is that, is in that the clear light is transparency, you know. It's not really white, and it's not black. It's between white and black. So it's the symbol of clear light is the twilight of dawn, pre-dawn, before the sunrise. There's a kind of little light where everything is kind of a grayish color, and there's no shadow either. So there's no darkness and there's no bright light. It's like everything's transparent. And um, so it's in a way deeper than white light. 
But then you as we know white light, the body, Rochana, the diamond white light, it goes through a prism and then all the colors of the rainbow emerge from that white light. You know? So now then I, I was thinking because since I knew you were an asthma today, the five winds, the five main moons. Mm -hmm. So thin mm -hmm. is connected to to a shabla now, no? Right? So mm -hmm. that's the blue one. So thin. And then Amita, the Vairochana is the is Kapti, Kapti, right? Is the all pervading wind. Mm -hmm. So the life holding wind, the vitality wind, the central wind is actually the dark blue one, the ultimate reality of perfection. I think Amitabha is connected to Genju, to Ma Udana, the rising wind, which connects to speech and so forth. Um, the evacuating wind is connected to Radha Sambhava, I believe. And the, therefore, I, I didn't know that, but uh, digestive, the metabolic wind is connected with the Baba City, I think. Minyam. Minyam. Radha Sambhava, here on the belly. Minyam is, is in, in the valley. The, 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 the vacuum of wind is in the city. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, sorry, I wasn't sure about that. What are we getting more? <laughs> oh, good! I mean, the city is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> secret! <laughs> secret! 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 This is... Uh, this is red and white spirit of enlightenment. <laughs> Basically, symbol of that. But you know, initiation is a very powerful thing. It's a, it's the heart of a Tibetan culture. This kind of thing, actually, because especially the secret initiation is where you change your genetic belonging, and instead of you thinking of yourself as of this race or that nation or this my ancestors or like that, you know, I have this kind of blood, that kind of blood, etc. Instead of that, through the guru you become genetically connected to the Buddha family. So you become part of the ancestor then truly becomes Yutok, for example, in this one, through the secret initiation. That's what that substance represents. It represents your changing of your genetic composition. And the greatness of the Tibetan people is the fact is about them. So now we have medicine that is genetic. Yeah. The, the, in the greatest of Tibetan people is that they are not much into this ancestor thing. Chinese go nuts about their sort of Chinese ancestors and all the people, you know, I have, you know, African blood or I have Wasp blood or I have Jewish blood or I have whatever, French blood. You know, people get into this all nonsense. It's all, it's all nonsense, but they get into it and they have all their ancestor wasps in both of you. They have some weird guy with a beard sitting there who was like a, you know, had a pirate, he was a pirate or a slave ship or he killed whales. And now they are big Boston Brahmins, you know. And then there's some poor woman standing next to me, looking like she needed a maid to help her cook the dinner, you know. And, uh, uh, and they think that's a big thing. And Chinese and Indians also do, an upper caste one. Tibetans, who cares, you know. They don't much care about it because they are in the lineage of Avalokiteshvara, of Yutok, of Medicine Buddha, of Buddha. They transmuted that racist thing, the root of racism about my genetic background, into this we're all children of the Bodhisattva means child of the Buddha, right? Jinaputra, Gyanse, right? Child of the Buddha. And Tibetan people so much got into the Buddha Dharma and, and their culture so infused with Buddha Dharma that they they switched ancestors. So, for example, you all received initiation today from Utah via Mr. Personification of Utah, the sun and moon guy. And that means you're all Dharma brothers and sisters. And Dharma brothers and sisters means that you should take a look at each other because you're now brothers and sisters. Instead of going back and thinking, well, I'm really from this, I'm a Hatfield, and I'm not a McCoy. <laughs> if there was a McCoy over there, I don't know about that one. It's an alien to me. So it's, everyone is a family. In other words, it's, it relates to this Buddha idea of we're all family. Right? Am I right, Ella? Is that fair? Is that good? Okay. So this is, a, so this is your dream family. We're all your dream family. Uh, and this is family. And you're my dream sisters and dream brothers. Kella's my dream daddy and mommy. <laughs> I said, you know, he's much younger than me. Maybe I'm grandpa. 
I'm like a dream grandpa. <laughs> Nowadays, I'm really enjoying it. Because I'm not worried about going home together because it's not plastic for. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, one thing before you would please remind me. You showed me that thing about Dalai Lama living 113 from the Tojibjian prophecy, but I lost it. I can't find it anymore. I can, I'll you can find still find it, it on your yes, phone? Yes. On WeChat or something? Mm -hmm. You can find it for me. Yeah. Please. And, and email to me somehow or text it. Yeah. I will mean, reach out to you. Reach out to you. Okay, thank you. Please do. There was a prediction from what, 18th century, about 200 years ago? Yes, yes. That the 14th Dalai Lama could live if he wanted 113 years. Mm -hmm. So then Dalai Lama was happy and he told all the abbots of all the monasteries he would do so. I'll do it if, ne if need be. Mm -hmm. Then he's been. <laughs> I don't want to, no, <laughs> <laughs> enough, you know, he's getting lazy about it. But I don't blame him, you know, because you get little aches and pains, you know. Oh, man, I'm <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. We have four minutes. There's a microphone coming. Justin. So after dinner, I think we do the practical part, sleeping. What are we going to do? After dinner, the practical part, sleeping. We'll do what? <laughs> practical part. Practical part. Practical? After dinner. Oh, sure. It's practical. <laughs> it's sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> sleeping and dreaming. Yes. <laughs> sure. Why not? You guys want to chant the mantra? You want to chant the mantra or do you dream of your practice? Okay, okay. Then after yeah, we don't need to talk after dinner. We after dinner, sleep. yes, we'll sleep. We need to sleep. <laughs> yes, questions, please? Um, I, I've heard that His Holiness, um, the Dalai Lama, does not lucid dream. So obviously, if, if you are not capable of lucid dreaming or if you're not capable of taking dream yoga to the final stage, there must be some other methods that work well because His Holiness doesn't lose his dream. Hey, my, question. my question is, what are those, what, what are other approaches um, that can I be think His Holiness is doing more clear light yoga. He does more he, clear, I'm he, just wondering why. Yeah, he is very much about clear light yoga. Because clear light yoga is connected with deep sleep. So once you are in the deep sleep state, there is no dream. That's the non-dual state. And uh, in the medical uh, science, it says when we fall asleep, we have four phases. Phase one, two, three, four. The fourth phase is called the deep sleep state. So that state, there 